Afghanistan, a news conference held by President George Bush and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. The two leaders were in Aspen, Colorado for a meeting of the Aspen Institute. Among the subjects the leaders commented on were Iraq's invasion of Kuwait and the United States defense arsenal. Well, let me uh, first welcome Prime Minister Thatcher back to the United States. It's a very timely visit. And as you can well imagine, we have been exchanging views on uh, the situation, the Iraq-Kuwait situation. Uh, not surprisingly, I find myself very much in accord uh, with the views of the Prime Minister. Uh, I reported to her on contacts that I've had uh, since I left Washington, uh, personal contacts with uh, uh, King Hussein, uh, Mr. Mubarak of Egypt, President Mubarak, uh, President Saleh of Yemen, a long conversation just now. I can tell you that Jim Baker has been in close touch uh, with the Soviet leadership and indeed uh, the last plan was for him to stop uh, in Moscow on his way back here. Uh, we are concerned about the situation. But I find that, uh, that uh, Prime Minister Thatcher and I are looking at it uh, on exactly the same wavelength, uh, concerned about this naked aggression, uh, condemning it, and uh, hoping that a p peaceful solution will be found that will result in the restoration of the Kuwaiti le leaders to their rightful place, and prior to that, a withdrawal of Iraqi forces. Prime Minister, welcome to Colorado and to the United States. And I, if you care to say a word on that, then we can take the questions. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for the welcome. We have, of course, been discussing the main question, as the President indicated. Iraq has violated and taken over the territory of a country which is a full member of the United Nations. That is totally unacceptable. And if it were allowed to endure, then there would be many other small countries that could never feel safe. The Security Council acted swiftly last night under the United States leadership, well supported by the votes of 14 members of the Security Council, and rightly demanded the withdrawal of Iraqi troops. If that withdrawal is not swiftly forthcoming, forthcoming. We have to consider the next step. The next step would be further consideration by the Security Council of possible measures under Chapter 7. The fundamental question is this, whether the nations of the world have the collective will effectively to see that Security Council resolution is upheld, whether they have the collective will effectively to do anything which the Security Council further agrees to see that Iraq withdraws and that the government of Kuwait is restored to Kuwait. None of us can do it separately. We need a collective and effective will of the nations belonging to the United Nations. First the Security Council, and then the support of all the others to make it effective. Mr. President, uh, when Kuwaiti shipping was in danger in the Gulf War, you put those ships under American flags. Now Kuwaiti itself has been invaded. The Kuwaiti ambassador says that they're desperate for help and that American intervention is of paramount importance. Will you answer that call, and how will you? I answer that we're considering uh, what the next steps by the United States should be, uh, just as we strongly support what Prime Minister Thatcher said about collective action in the United Nations. Are you still not contemplating military intervention? No, I mentioned at the time we were going to discuss different options, uh, which I did after that first press conference this morning, and we're not ruling any options in, but we're not ruling any options out. And so uh, 
that uh, that is about where we are right now. Uh, we had thorough briefings. You know who was at the meeting today uh, by General Powell, General Schwarzkopf, and others. But uh, I think it would be inappropriate to discuss options. Mr. Mr. President, President is there, what are the chances of uh, U.S.-Soviet cooperation in uh, restoring peace to the government? I would say they're very good. I reported to uh, Prime Minister Thatcher on a conversation that uh, I had with Jim Baker uh, on the plane flying out here. And uh, I think you could uh, uh, say that if he, he would not be stopping uh, in Moscow unless there would be a, a good degree of uh, uh, cooperation between the Soviet Union and the United States. But again, the Soviet Union is a member of the United Nations. They voted with the United Kingdom and with the United States. And uh, so I, I think uh, there is a good level of cooperation with the Soviets and hopefully with other permanent members and hopefully with the rest of the members of the Security Council. We understand that the Soviets have announced that they are cutting off uh, arms shipments to the Iraqis. Uh, are the French, which is the other big arms supplier uh, to Baghdad, also uh, planning to cut off arms shipments? I've not talked today. I believe you had contact, uh, Prime Minister, with the, at some level with the French government, but I, I can't answer that question. Um, we had contact, uh, Douglas Heard. I believe had contact with Mr. Dumas. This was about the Security Council resolution, which France, of course, fully supported. Mr. President, isn't, isn't Saddam Hussein uh, at the root of this problem? Uh, hasn't he replaced Gaddafi as sort of the bad boy of the region? Would you like to see him removed? And what can you do about him? I would like to see his withdraw his troops and the restoration of the legal government uh, in Kuwait to the rightful place. And that's the step that should be taken. I might say, uh, that I am somewhat heartened by the, uh, by the conversations I had with Mubarak and with uh, King Hussein, uh, Mr. Saleh, all of whom I consider friends of the United States, and uh, all of them who are trying to engage in what they call an Arab answer to the question, uh, working diligently behind the scenes uh, to uh, come to an agreement uh, that would satisfy uh, the United Nations and the rest of the world. So there is there are collective efforts beginning to be undertaken by these worthy countries, uh, and and let's hope that they result in in a uh, satisfactory resolution of this international crisis. But, but Mr. President, Saddam Hussein has been uh, the source of the most recent mischief in the region. Uh, nuclear triggers, missiles, the big gun, as uh, Prime Minister Thatcher knows about. Uh, is he going to be a constant source of, of problems there in, in, in that region? He behaves he this way is going to be a constant source. Mr. And, I, and we, we, we find his behavior uh, intolerable in this instance. And so to the rest of the United Nations countries that met uh, last night and reaction from around the world is is unanimous in being condemnatory so that speaks for itself Prime Minister. Did I have Leslie? someone say Prime Minister? <laughs> yeah, I hope you did. Prime Minister. <laughs> Please. Yeah, sorry, I, thought, I thought you had finished. Uh, if so, I thought that that guy shouldn't have it all. Oh. Prime Minister, over here, Prime Minister, is there any action short of military intervention that Britain or the other United Nations countries could take yes, that would course. be effective against Iraq? Yes, of course. Yes, of course there is. You know the whole Chapter 7 measures, and that, of course, obviously we're in consultation now as to which which measures we could all agree on uh, so the Security Council would vote them and then they'd become mandatory. The question then is whether you can make them effective over the rest of the nations. And obviously uh, the 14 couldn't do it on their own and so there'll be a good deal of, um, of uh, 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 negotiation as to what to put in the next Security Council resolution if Iraq does not withdraw. But are you confident that you'd be able to mobilize that kind of international support? I believe that uh, further Chapter 7 measures would have a good chance of getting through. We certainly would support them. Mr. President, Mr. President. may I add to that that the United States has demonstrated its interest in that by the action that uh, I took this morning by executive order, uh, you know, cutting back, cutting off uh, imports from Iraq to this country. Yes, Leslie. Mr. President, can I ask both of you to answer this? What how, how does the fact that they apparently have chemical weapons now affect your decision making and narrow your options? I don't think it affects it at all. 
uh, what has happened is a total violation of international law. You cannot have a situation where one country marches in and takes over another country which is, which is a member of the United Nations. I don't think the particular weapons they have affects that fundamental position. Doesn't it affect what actions we can take? And doesn't it make military actions? No, I do not think dangerous? it necessarily affects what actions we can take. I, I, I would agree with that assessment. Mr. President. Yes, Anne. What did the yeah. Arab leaders that you talked to ask the United States to do? Did they ask you to either restrain yourself or to become militarily involved? And have you contacted Israel? Uh, there was. We've had contact with Israel. Yes, I have not personally, but we have. And uh, they asked for uh, restraint. Uh, they asked for a short period of time in, in which to have this Arab solution uh, evolve and uh, be placed into effect. And uh, they are concerned, obviously, uh, with this uh, naked aggression. But it was more along that line, let us try now, as neighbors and Arabs, to uh, resolve this. And I made clear to them that it had gone beyond simply a regional dispute because of the naked aggression that violates the United Nations Charter. And what did Israel say it would do at this point? Uh, I would have to think back to the details of it, but offering uh, uh, cooperation, I think, was about where, we, where I would leave it there. Mr. President, we're hearing reports now that some of the Americans, particularly in the oil fields, may have been rounded up by Iraqi troops. Do you have anything to that? How does that affect uh, your reaction? Well, I, I don't have anything on that right now. And secondly, uh, it would affect uh, the United States in a very dramatic way because I view a fundamental responsibility of my presidency is protecting American citizens. And uh, if they're threatened or harmed uh, or uh, put into harm's way, uh, I have certain responsibilities. But I hadn't heard that, Charles, and I hope that that is not correct. May I, may I also ask about British citizens? Uh, any word? Are they uh, safe? Uh, we have some British citizens in Kuwait. Um, you probably know that there was a British Airways flight there uh, on its way to, to, uh, to Africa, and the passengers there are now in a hotel in Kuwait. So we have some there, and of course we have both, uh, we have some, uh, a number of other British citizens in Kuwait, and we too are concerned for their safety. Mr. President, some of the smaller nations in the Persian Gulf, Bahrain, the Emirates, and the others, obviously have reason to worry about what has happened here. What can the United States and Great Britain say to those countries and those people who are feeling very concerned today? About well, the United States can say that we are very much concerned for your safety. And uh, this naked aggression could un would understandably uh, shake them to the core. And so what we are trying to do is to have collective action uh, that will reverse this action out uh, and to make very clear that, uh, that uh, uh, we are totally in accord with their desire to see the Iraqis withdraw, cease fire, withdraw, and restitution of the Kuwaiti government. And that would be the most reassuring thing of all for these uh, countries who, whether it's true or not, feel threatened by this action. At the risk of being a hypothetical, if Iraq does not move out quickly and has gained a foothold among the smaller Gulf nations, uh, what can the United States and other nations do militarily? We have many options, and it is too hypothetical indeed for me to comment on them, and I'd refer that to uh, also to uh, the Prime Minister. Well, that's precisely why you're looking at the next stage in the Security Council and what other measures can be put into action mandatorily and why the very nations to whom you refer, we should also need their cooperation in putting other actions into effect. Final question, please. Mr. President, have you dispatched the USS independence to the region? And have you heard from Saudi Arabia? Well, I, I would not discuss the movement of any U.S. forces. And uh, what was the second part of your question? Have you heard from Saudi Arabia? Uh, no, but I have a call uh, to King Fahd, and I was supposed to have taken that call before now, but it's been delayed by a few minutes. And so I hope that before... Uh, I leave here, I will talk to him. I think it is very important. I do talk to him, and uh, I leave it there, I think. Okay. Huh? What do you expect him to say? Well, that's too hypothetical, too. Prime but Minister. I, uh, I know he'll be expressing the same kind of concern that we feel. 
Uh, Prime Minister, if I could, uh, the President in his executive order this morning established a U.S. Uh, embargo on trade with uh, Iraq. When you mentioned Chapter 7 measures, would you support in the Security Council a call for an international embargo on Iraqi oil? We are prepared to support in the Security Council uh, those measures which collectively we can agree to and which collectively we can make effective. Those are the two tests. We have already frozen all Kuwaiti assets. Kuwaitis have very considerable assets and it's important that those do not fall into Iraq hands. Iraq, we believe, has only very, very small assets and rather a lot of debts. So the position is rather different with her. Right. Do you believe an oil embargo could be made effective? What about the budget, Mr. President? Coming up next on C-SPAN, an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council on Iraq's invasion of...